October is the month to not only acknowledge domestic violence survivors, but also be a voice for the voiceless. This year is especially important because according to the Women's Shelter in Rochester, there's been a sharp increase in the severity of cases. And our Carly Petra spoke with professionals who deal with domestic violence on a daily basis to get a better understanding of the abuse. And Carly, we know that all domestic abuse is not always physical. Yes, Tom, according to those I spoke with, domestic abuse can also be psychological, emotional, verbal, and even financial. There are multiple ways abusers will try to remain in control. We saw a sharp increase in the severity of abuse. Most of us felt the isolation the pandemic has brought on, especially at the height of the shutdown. We saw an increase um, to our hotline um, for just questions about resources, um, in addition to um, assisting with um, the fouling of um, orders of protection and harassment orders. If individuals were already in a violent relationship or situation, it just exacerbated that um, because of the isolation. So whereas someone may have been able to leave uh, for a few hours a day and go maybe to um, a local organization, um, if, it, if they experienced a shutdown, they could no longer lean on that particular organization. The initial signs you or someone you care about may be in an abusive relationship are subtle. Isolation. Uh, Issues with power and control, if their significant other um, feels as though they need to control them or they feel as though they're being controlled, um, you know, their choices are no longer their own. Phone tracking is also a common sign. The women's shelter says these signs could quickly escalate. Often, a victim of domestic violence must figure out the safest time to leave the relationship. First step would definitely be reaching out to a domestic violence program, calling a crisis hotline. Um, and, you know, just asking them and finding out, you know, what can I do? Um, you know, how can you help me? It's best to contact 911 in the heat of a violent situation. Our first party, like I've said, was, is just making sure things are safe, um, that nobody's injured, but then assessing things and taking time to listen and listen to, um, you know, what people say, um, those that are involved, what they have to say. It's a matter of sometimes just, um, you know, learn to be patient, um, being calm, being compassionate, um, you know, and trying to understand and not just automatically go to a call and a call thinking you know what's going on ahead of time. According to the Women's Shelter, one in three women and one in four men experience some type of domestic violence in their life. That is why the Women's Shelter provides services to any adult and their family experiencing domestic violence. If you or a loved one needs immediate assistance, please call the crisis hotline at 507-285-1010. Representatives are available to take your call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Tom, back to you. An important resource. Thank you, Carly. And your old cell phone could save a life as well. Family Service Rochester is looking for donations of old cell phones and their chargers, chargers for victims of domestic violence. FSR plans to distribute these cell phones and chargers to adults and children who have experienced domestic violence so that they can call 911 in the case of an emergency. After clearing personal information from your cell phone, you can drop it off along with a charger at Family Service Rochester's main office at 4600 18th Avenue Northwest or their South Building at 625 Highway 14 East.